Hello planty people, welcome back to my channel. I am Empress Eri and this is Plant Tips with Empress. Now today I am doing kind of a combo video, just kind of a longer form video. Probably not going to do a Water Baby Wednesdays this week, but I'm going to put this in instead. So today I am going to be doing kind of a repot and catch up video. So it is the very start of autumn now in Australia. And so this is going to be my last big bulk repot before winter and I'm going to be trying to avoid repotting anything over winter as we go into the cold months because things just do not like being repotted in the cold shock um which is fair I don't like getting out of the shower in winter and that's kind of the equivalent is when you pull your pot and uh, your plant out of the you know pot in the middle of winter it's kind of like getting out of a nice warm shower and jumping into a freezing cold room and that's just not comfortable and it can be really really harsh on your plants so I am doing my last big bulk repot before winter hits and I thought I would film along with you all and we kind of do it together. So I have a bunch of stuff here that I'm working with and that I'm repotting and I will kind of give you close ups of each plant and talk about them a little bit as I go along. I've got my soil mixes and some pots over here and I will be kind of mixing as I go. But yeah, so I hope you enjoy this kind of more relaxed, long form video today with my lovely plant corner behind me, which will be getting upgraded soon, hopefully. I keep ordering shelves from Kmart and having my shelves refunded. It's been a time, um, but hopefully I get the shelves soon and then I can upgrade all the space behind me and you will see that all changed in my autumn houseplant tour, which hopefully I won't forget until like the end of the season. But it's too soon to do it now because I literally just did my summer houseplant tour. So we're going to have to wait a little while until they get the autumn houseplant tour. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to get this camera in a little bit closer so you see less of my face and more of the plants. And we'll get into it. All right, so I'm back. Now, it's actually been a whole 24 hours since I filmed that introduction, but I ended up having a really hectic day yesterday, which I'm about to fill you in on. Um, and so that kind of is a little bit why I kind of disappeared for literally a day in the middle there. But we're back and we're gonna get into some of this repotting and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about why I had to kind of vanish yesterday, a more exciting thing ended up happening, and um, what that means I have to show you as well. I'm very excited, like I'm so super excited about this new thing that um, I managed to pick up yesterday, and yes, it's a plant. <laughs> um, all right, so jumping right in, I'm trying, not gonna waste too much time because it's gonna end up being a bit of a long video. I'm gonna kind of show you everything that I have here to repot and a little bit about what I'm gonna be repotting them in. And then I might pop you on a time lapse and do the repotting like that way and you can kind of watch the time lapse of the repotting with some cute music over the top. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's jump right into what I've got right next to me. So um, firstly, I've got a bunch of Syngoniums, which hilariously I told myself I didn't like Syngoniums and here we are with five or six, five or six Syngoniums next to me to pot up slash repot. Um, I've got a pink princess, um, I've got a water, my watermelon Deschidia, I think I'm saying that right. Got a couple of calatheas, we've got some begonias, um, a phytona, peperomia. So um, I'm just going to start showing you what I'm working with and then what I'm going to plant them in and then you can watch me plant them, as I just said, and now I'm rambling. Ah, I just knocked my glasses off my face. Alright, so firstly I'm going to start at the very front of the table here. So this is my red, oh, already making a mess. Red watermelon um, sandoresi. I probably am saying that completely wrong. Peperomia red watermelon is its common name. So you can see there it looks very similar to a watermelon peperomia, but it does have the red colour on the back. This one is just thriving for me at the moment. It's beautiful. Picked it up from my local hardware store for what's the label say? 
$17. So this is still in the original soil that I got it in and I need to take it out and repot it um, because I've just kind of forgotten to get around to it. So I just popped it in a decorative pot and went, it'll be fine, I'll just leave it alone. And now it desperately is ready for a repot. I'm going to prune all these awkward flowers too. I call them rat tails because they kind of looks like, like if you've ever had pet rats, they look like a, and kind of feel a little bit um, like a little tiny rat's tail, especially the feel. They have that sort of feeling of a rat's tail. It's a bit weird. So um, I'm actually going to prune all of the flowers off so that it has more energy to deal with the repot. So um, that's this one here. And then I'm just going to pop it there for a second. Um, now, what I was saying before, the watermelon shidia, this is a plant I got at the end of last year and now it has grown so much. All of these little vines had no leaves on them at all. It had um, been quite damaged either in transit or someone had come along and pinched a whole bunch of the leaves um, and pocketed them and taken them home. And um, so it is such a pretty little plant. Like, look at that. The leaves are so interesting. And the new leaves, when they come out, they come out in this sort of red, red pinky color. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it on the camera there, but they're absolutely gorgeous. And I'm a little bit concerned. I've been a little bit worried about repotting this one because trailing vine plants are always kind of hard and the soil that it in is like super compacted. Uh, so I'm a bit concerned about her, but I guess we'll see what it looks like when I get her out. Um, but she's actually one of my favorite plants at the moment. I don't know why, but something about her, she just is so damn cute. I love it. Um, all right, so here we have a few of the syngoniums that we are repotting today. So there are actually two separate cuttings in this jar and they look super different. So hopefully you can tell. So see, one of them has like a pink striped down the center and one of them is like this lime green so i think one is a lemon and lime and i'm not sure what the other one is so i'm going to pop them up separately so i can watch them grow as they get bigger and try and figure out what they are if you know if you're a massive syngonium person and you look at that and go oh that's just a this let me know in the comments below so i can figure it out um this one's another one that's a little bit of a mystery my friend gave it to me and i can't remember what they were saying it was. It's really cute though. It's some one of the dwarf varieties, I think. Um, and it's been in here for ages and really needs to be potted up. So it's got this really pretty pink stripe down the center of it as well. So um, yeah, that one's really cute. I like that one. And speaking of syngoniums, so um, this one is one and this one is one that I managed to pick up recently now this one is so big you can't even see the whole plant i'll have to turn her a bit sideways for you to see the whole plant this is a syngonium fantasy uh syngonium white fantasy syngonium uh pepper pod podophilic i'm just gonna put it on the screen there's the name <laughs> now until recently these plants were very very expensive in australia uh they were topping 200 odd dollars or more for a plant about this size. And then um, the local uh, box stores, as they get nicknamed in America, um, or as like hardware stores, Bunnings in Australia, um, they had a run of them. And I was very lucky that I managed to get in early and grab one for $40. Um, <laughs> couldn't believe it. And it is just a beauty. That leaf on the end is a brand new leaf. It was damaged when it was opened, so I'm not sure about that, but check out this beautiful pure white leaf. Isn't that just the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? Ugh. It's a little bit damaged from being transported by the shop. Um, you know, white leaves are extremely delicate and something bumps up against it and it will get a bruise. And so that's what you can see on the end there is that's a little bruise on the end of the leaf, but it's fine. I'm not complaining. And then look at that leaf. Ugh gorgeous so this one is actually just going to go back into the pot it's in probably um unless the root system is looking ginormous and it needs to go into a larger size 
but because it is a more expensive plant, um, this hardware store actually has a return policy on plants. So if it dies in the first 12 months and you've still got it in its original pot and you've got your receipt and all of or evidence of the receipt, then you can actually return it. So um, I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to repot it back into the same pot just in case anything does happen to happen to her in the first 12 months. And if she dies, I can take her back and at least get my money back. Um, so I'm going to put her back into this pot as long as the root system is okay with it. If the root system's too large, I'm going to pot her up into a bigger pot and put the sticker on the tag if I can get it off and all of that sort of stuff. Um, now speaking of awesome hardware finds, you'll also recognize another Syngonium here. This is another one that was very, very, very expensive in Australia until Bunnings decided to do a run of them. And it is a Syngonium confetti. Look at that. Look at that pink. Isn't that just stunning? And the little speckles are so damn cute. So this one I actually wasn't really a fan of and then I saw it in person and I went, oh, that's pretty. So after seeing her in person, I had to have it. It's got a brand new leaf opening over here, which is just looking like it's gonna be a stunner. Um, try and pop it out over there. Like, check that out. Absolutely gorgeous. So um, yeah, I saw this in person and went, nope, need it. <laughs> um, and this one was, uh, $47. So again, so much cheaper than the two $300 that we were seeing on eBay and Facebook groups for this particular variety. And um, so for that price, I was very much like, you know what, I do like that. And I and I brought one home with me. Now I'm just going to pause. I realized that the exhaust fan in my kitchen was running in the background and it probably came through in the audio and it would have sounded awful. So I've just flicked that off. So apologies if that was bothering you for a while there. Anyway, back to my gorgeous big audience. <laughs> so yes, these two babies here are going to be repot into the pots that they're already in. And um, the Syngoniums I'm going to be putting into a pretty general mix. If you've watched my soil video, which I will link in the description, um, I am going to be using basically um, a cross between my succulent mix and my philodendron mix. So if you kind of mash those two together, so um, that's kind of where I'm going to be going with what I'm putting these in. They do like a well-draining soil that doesn't stay too moist. So it's going to be mostly a succulent mix, charcoal, perlite with a little bit of uh, the cocoa peat moss, um, cocoa core, and then some orchid bark. So my orchid bark, unfortunately, at the moment is not as chunky as I would normally use. The company I order from was running low and they didn't have the size I normally order. I order it, normally order nine to 12 centimeters and this is six to nine centimeters, but it still does the job. It still creates a nice amount of, um, you know, drainage and so I'm doing that. And yeah, so that's what I'm putting these in today and I'm going to again like I said I'll attempt to put them back into the same pots. So these are the adorable Syngoniums. Um, now you've probably seen something lurking behind the edge over here and I may as well reveal it now. This is why I disappeared yesterday. It is a oh, covered in cat fluff. Oh my goodness. That ruined the moment a little bit didn't it? <laughs> um, it is a variegated booby cactus. Yes, I am so excited. You have no idea how excited I am by this. So I'm gonna get it right up close to the camera so you can really like have a good look at her. So this is just the, oh my gosh, please focus, please. There we go. So she is just the cutest damn thing. Look at these colors. So this is the difference for a variegated one is these amazing purple nipples basically these pinky purple nipple flushes and you can see some yellow and white kind of discolorations through the plant now this got posted in a facebook group yesterday for a hundred dollars and i could not damn believe it because i paid 160 dollars for my other one which 
I would love to show you right now, but she is currently in quarantine for pest control. But um, my other one is about this wide and about the same height. It's actually grown very, very differently. But if you see the two close, actually, I'm going to put a photo on the screen right now. So that's a photo of the two of them side by side. Um, and you can see that this one has a very different coloration um, to the other one. So I was amazed by that. Uh, this lady only had two of them and I managed to score one and a friend of mine, um, she managed to score one as well. And I'm just in just awe. So this is my um, amazing new baby. So um, like my other booby cactus, I am going, again, this is the technical name. I wasn't going to try and pronounce that. You probably don't blame me. <laughs> um, it just gets called a booby cactus, as you can probably guess why. So um, I will have to make a new booby pot for her. My other one, um, I have made, handmade, a, a sculpted a polymer clay uh, booby pot to go around the outside of it and I'm going to do the same thing for this one but um, today I'm going to be potting her up in <clears throat> my um, cactus mix again from my soil my succulent mix um, but with a bit of extra sand in it so it's going to have quite a bit of sand uh, horticultural sand mixed into the mix into that one and I'm going to pot her in a fairly small pot for her size and then I'm going to have to find a way of staking her up so she doesn't fall over um, but I just, this is, so this is why I disappeared yesterday. I had a very short time frame to go pick it up or it was going to be sold to the next person. And, um, so I was mad rushing around to go pick that up. And then, um, I had to get on with the rest of my day. So that's why I disappeared yesterday and was unable to continue filming this video. But I think it's good because now we're back and I get to show you this because it's gorgeous. And now because I'm down here and my face is here, it's not going to focus on the plant. But yes, so um, that is my precious, amazing new booby cactus. And I just I just kind of want to leave her in frame somewhere. Ow, she spiked me. That was rude. Um, because she's just such a babe. So she can just kind of hang at the front of the frame here. Is that going to work? There we go. <laughs> All right. Um, so... Moving along, um, next we have a couple of um, new uh, bleh, calatheas. So these two calatheas are ones that I ordered on eBay. Um, they are pretty standard ones. This one is a this variety and this one is this variety. And um, they're both really cute little babies, but um, like this soil doesn't look too bad. It just looks like it's mostly cocoa peat though. So I just want to just, I'm a bit of a control freak when it comes to my soils, as you probably all um, know if you watch my channel. So I'm going to be changing these out so that I know what's in them because um, I don't like not knowing what the soil variety is. So um, I'm just going to be switching these out into that and probably leave them in the pots they're already in because they seem a decent size for the plants. Right. Um, this is a Fatona that I have had in my water propagations for a really long time. Hopefully I can get a, a good footage of it because it's a really cute little plant. Um, a little white Fatona uh, that I've been water propagating for a while. There's a cat on my chair now, so I guess I'm not sitting back down. Seriously, I stood up for three seconds. Thanks, dude. Can you see him? You can. Hi, Murphy. <laughs> um, so this little Fatona, these things are so thirsty that I really want to try putting it into a self-watering pot. So um, I'm a really big fan of self-watering pots at the moment, so I will do a bit of a close-up. On that, um, when I put one of these, I have a few things going in self-watering, so I might actually film one of those and you can watch how I do that. And then I'm gonna be putting a pink princess into a self-watering as well, which is this big one up the front here. 
So this little Fatona is going to go into this self-watering pot because they are so thirsty that I figured it should keep it happy in theory. Um, so that's what's happening with that one and I'm going to be putting it into a more cocoa peat heavier mix with some of this and some of the orchid bark. Um, then I have, so this is a pink princess that when I got it, it had a lot of variegation. Like quite a lot of variegation and then it's kind of lost a lot of leaves and it's grown from the top and the top is just not getting any variegation and it's kind of giving me some really unattractive leaves so I'm going to be cutting it in the middle about here and then I'm going to propagate this top bit and see what happens with it and then I'm going to hope that this bottom bit grows back and I'm actually going to be planting this in the same pot as this new pink princess cutting I have here. So this cutting's got a decent amount of pink on it, as you can see here. Um, and then it's got some nice big chunks on the backs of leaves as well. Um, so I'm hoping that, like, look at that one. It's beautiful. So I'm hoping that potting them in the same pot like this one will give me, this old little one, will give me some of that original pink that it had because it did have a lot of pink lower down when I bought it. So I'm hoping that if I kind of cut it in the middle, it'll um, encourage some of that pink growth to come back. And then this one potted in the same pot, hopefully they'll grow together and it'll look a little bit lusher. So I'm putting this one in this self-watering pot here because my other little pink princess that I've got over here behind me that you probably can't see because it's not, I don't think it's in frame. Um, that one is doing really well in a self-watering pot and I'm going to be doing that in my philodendron mix from my soil video. So she's kind of awkward in this jar at the moment so I'm going to have to kind of pop her back over against the wall over here. Um, what else are we working on today? So we have two begonias. Um, that I'm repotting and the reason I'm repotting them is they're still in their original soil from the shop and I don't like what they're in at all. They're both in really terrible cheap peat mixes um, which are just really bad. Like they're just both in the worst, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but the soil that it is in is just disgusting. <laughs> So I'm going to be taking that out and repot like repotting both of these. This one's the same, but it's still growing and it's beautiful and it's healthy. So I'm trying not to be too judgmental of the horrible soil, but it is like nasty. So um, I'm going to be repotting both of those into a very uh, core heavy mix. So all of these are going in quite similar versions of the same soil, except for the cactus. And then I've got a Hoya over here that will be going in basically the same thing as what the, um, well, it's going to be going in a very, um, well, it'll be going in my Hoya mix if you re just watch the soil video. Um, <laughs> but nearly everything's going to be going into the same mix at the end of the day. So I've got these two begonias here. This is a Rex begonia of some form and this is a cane begonia of some form. I really don't know any more than that. They both just say foliage assorted. So really helpful. Um, yeah. If again, if you know what they are, please let me know down below because I love to find out what the names of the plants that I have are. Um, next, I have something that you would have seen in Water Baby Wednesdays if you follow those videos, which are my propagation videos. So this is um, one of my monster, my monster, um, I am putting the name on the screen now because I can never remember what the variety is because I have like seven monsteras varieties and I always kind of forget. But it's a really, really pretty one. Gives these beautiful leaves. Uh, Cipliacana, I think, but I've already put it on the screen so you already know. This one had grown quite leggy. It had grown a really kind of awkward leggy part in the middle and it had all this beautiful growth on the end and then it was doing nothing on it just had this big long awkward stem so I chopped it in half and propagated it and now it is ready to go you can see all the roots there it's ready to go 
into a pot so I'm going to basically be putting it back into this pot with this one and refreshing this soil a little bit this soil's been in here for probably about 12 months and it needs just a little bit of a refresher so I'm just going to be tipping out half of the soil mixing in a bit of fresh soil and repotting them all into one so that it'll grow as a double vine that's going to be a little bit more full and happy so that's the plan on that one and it's just going back into that same pot <laughs> here is a peperomia that again if you watch my water baby Wednesdays you'll be like hey that's that one you've had in water for a year and you keep saying you're gonna pot up and then you never do well I'm doing it however she's starting to look a bit sad and a bit gross so I'm actually kind of worried it's not gonna survive but we'll find out right so yeah it's just a little bit a little watermelon and uh, not a little watermelon a little moonlight peperomia I don't think the camera is catching it at all. Um, it's a pretty basic little baby, but I'm going to hopefully have her survive. Again, well draining mix closer to a succulent mix than anything else because that's what they actually prefer. Um, what else have we got here? Um, so this one is one that, I, well, I don't even know if it's still alive in here, to be honest. The leaves are looking really dead and really sad. So this was a node and a half of a variegated Hoya Kerry. And I don't know if that node has died and if there's any roots in there. So we're going to pull her out right now. And we're going to find out if there's anything even in here. Um, what do you reckon? Do you reckon she's fully dead or do you reckon maybe I have something happening? Well, we have roots. Oh my God, I have roots. Ah! Oh my God, I'm going to cry. I genuinely thought this thing was dead. Like as a doornail sort of dead. Let me just show you what is happening under here. So these leaves, right? They look dead as a doornail. Super dry, super crunchy, dead as a doornail. But look, there's a root. So you can see there was literally a node and a half. Um, and I think there's some new growth points. So I feel like maybe the stem was buried a bit too deep. Um, I thought the roots were going to come out of the node, but the roots have come out of the end. So when I repot it, I'm not going to repot that as deep. I'm going to actually um, raise, raise her up a little bit so that she's not buried as deep. So that these, because I'm pretty sure these are new little growth points here. So that these new little growth points can actually get some sun and things but check out that oh my god that makes me so happy oh hi Vala are you happy too Vala's happy too <laughs> honey you can't be right there there's a cactus move out off you go <laughs> so that is unbelievably exciting I honestly thought I would be pulling out a dead stump and you would all have to commiserate with me as I pulled out a dead stump but that's not what's happening so celebrate so it's actually looking like it's probably a bit thirsty. So when I repot that, um, I'm going to give it a really good drink with some of my um, seaweed tonic. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that. I honestly can't. I'm just so in awe and shock. And now I don't know how to put it down so it doesn't damage it. Stay, be good. Oh my God, that's so exciting. Ah! <laughs> All right, and last thing here that is going to be repot today is this alocasia um, poly. Now, um, this one, the poor thing, since I got it, has had a hard time. She's got um, some pretty serious leaf damage happening on the back. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it, but she's got some really serious damage. She got spider mites really badly, and then I um, treated the heck out of it, so I used killer mite which is a very poisonous bug spray so please be careful if you're going to use it you have to use proper protection and then i used um this systemic bug killer as well and then i also used um what else did i use uh daily like two or three times a day which is probably where some of this leaf damage is from um, spraying with hydrogen peroxide and alcohol mixed with water in a spray bottle which be very careful with that it is quite harsh on your leaves it can burn your plants pretty badly so um, just watch out for that stuff some um, if you've watched my Calathea series you'll see that I did burn 
quite a few of my Calatheas going a bit hard with the hydrogen on the spider mites. But, you know, what, do you, what can you do? So I'm going to be repotting her into a well-draining um, moist mix. And hopefully um, she doesn't get too upset about it. And then I'm actually going to be hoping to set up my heat mat for her soon. Because winter is coming in my city and it does get very, very cold. And um, I don't want her to get too cold and have to go into hibernation. And what have I noticed here is this... Oh no, that's literally just dust. I thought I was looking at spider mites again. But no, this time it is actually just dirt on the leaf. Oh my god. I thought I was finally at the end of the battle with the spider mites. And then for all of a sudden I was like, are they back? But they're not. It's fine. Um, so I'm going to be mixing a little bit of this into... The new pot of some of these that have had pest problems so these the calatheas um and a little bit into the syngoniums just because i really want to use it as a preventer as well if there is a single spider mite hiding in this collection behind me i don't want them using any of these plants as their prey but yeah so that is what all of the plants in front of me are and what I am going to be doing with them. And yes, Murph, we're sharing a seat now. He doesn't even care. Uh, so now I'm going to be getting off the chatting a little bit, and then I'm going to be jumping into some time-lapse funness, and you can kind of just sit back and watch me repotting some stuff. So yeah, and then I will come back at the end and show you everybody in their new pots and their new soils and It'll be a time. time lapse done that's nearly everyone repotted um my fingernails are now disgusting so i'll have to clean and chop them before i go out uh, but um yeah that's everyone repotted uh the dishidia was probably a lot easier than i actually expected but if you could tell in the time lapse i kind of had to just kind of plonk it on top with the roots and fingers crossed it'll grow back properly um so that one was a bit of a pain and i lost a few leaves but hopefully it'll be all right You'll notice that the um, time lapse changes speeds halfway through the video. I realized that at first I had it on the wrong setting and it was going a bit fast for what I wanted. So I paused it and had to go get some stuff and came back and, and redid it. So sorry about the speed changes in the middle. Um, I hope that it's not too disorientating or anything like that. Now I came back, I only have a couple of things left to pot and um, I was running low on dirt so I had to go get a new bucket um, mixed up. Now I thought I would do this one while I was talking and then wrap it up and do the last few off camera because you kind of get the idea by now. So um, I'm going to put some plants now into some self-watering pots. I've been having a lot of really good success with some self-watering pots of late. Um, I'm not using them with water always in the reservoir. So um, I'll fill the reservoir, wait for the plant to drink it all, let it dry out again, and then fill the reservoir again. Because my soils are usually so well draining, quite often the water goes straight through and it doesn't actually have time to absorb. So what this means is that when the soils dry, the plant will absorb it. Hey, baby. He's back. The, the plant will absorb it slowly. Um, it's kind of like bottom watering if you're a bottom waterer. Um, so it's a very similar sort of um, theory to that is how I use it. 
So I'll be using it today for two different plants, like I said at the beginning. Um, so this big one is going to have Pink Princess Murphy! Get off! Oi! Move! Get your butt off my table! Excuse you! Oh my gosh, you're so heavy. Bye! <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so, um, I will be putting this Pink Princess cutting in that I got recently. Um, it's got some beautiful colour to it, as I showed you before. Um, and it's going to be going in this pot. And then I'm going to be head chopping the other Pink Princess, this one here. So let's do that now together. I don't like cutting my plants. But I think this is genuinely going to be a really good thing for this one. And I'm going to get some of that amazing pink variegation back. So, let's do it. Now, the worst thing I get cutting a pink princess is because of the type of philodendron that they are. Um, and I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see it. But the sap comes out and bleeds like blood red. And it makes me so sad because it's like, oh my god, she's bleeding at me. So I'm going to be popping this one. You can see it's got quite a decent root system. Um, I'm going to be popping this one in this pot as well. However, the root system is a bit goopy. Oh no, she's all right from being in there. No, nope, it's fine. So I'm going to pop that up with this one over here. And hopefully that stump will grow back some nice plantage. Murph, what are you doing, baby? Go away, please, honey, before you knock someone over and break them. Thank you. You've had breakfast. I know. I was there. I did it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to be popping this in here and then the Fatona in the other one. Now how I set these pots up. So these pots come with the pot, the string, and the like catchment. So um, with these, I will tie a knot quite close to the top. Not sure how well you're going to be able to see that. So I tie a knot quite close to the top so you don't actually have much string in the pot because I don't want too much absorbing happening. I don't want it to be soggy. I want it to just absorb a little bit. Um, because what I've been, from research I've done these, replicate a water table. So, dude, seriously? Pause. In another room. Um, so what I was researching is that these are very similar to how plants will absorb water in nature. Um, and so I really am liking this for a lot of different types of plants. Now that does mean you end up with quite a long string in the bottom here, but um, you know, that's fine. So you end up with, I'm not sure how well it's gonna show. There's a little bit of the string and the knot in there. Um, so next I just pot it up with my regular soil. Um, now for this one, because I'm only doing things that need the same mixture, I'm just gonna Yes, I couldn't find all my buckets, so I'm using the bottom of another self-watering pot <laughs> as a as a temporary bucket. Um, so I'm just mixing some of the cocoa. So if you don't know what the cocoa is, what I'm talking about when I say that, it, ugh, you can't really see. But it's this, but I'm using um, one with a seed raising mix in it as well, so it's not 100% this brick. But it is uh, like a cocoa fiber that you add water to and it expands and it's really good substrate. It holds moisture nicely, but um, as long as you're mixing it with other things, it drains well. All right, so what I'm doing with these two cuttings is because it's a, um, it's a pretty large pot, I'm a bit worried about it, but I don't have an in-between size, so I'm hoping that it'll be okay. Um, putting the two cuttings together means they're not going to feel like they're as, like it's going to feel a bit more crowded, which is good because they are quite small. So we're going to take the stump, which has a pretty decent root system. Just pop her there. And then this one, it's just going to go next to it. All right. She's just going to be able to stand up by herself a little bit there for a second. Now, this can be a little bit time consuming, which is why you can see I did it on time lapse. Stop it. Getting hands in again. Just 
going to sprinkle a little tiny bit of cinnamon on the end that I just chopped. So this stump here, so that um, the cinnamon helps with fungus um, and is like a natural antifungal. So I'm going to just pop that on there and hope that that kind of assists in making sure that nothing um, kind of goes wrong with that stump and it does give us some new growth points because um yeah the, the start of that plant really did have beautiful variegation it had a half and half pink leaf so i really want to kind of encourage that to come back a little bit so that's the pink princess pot and then the fatona we're going to do the same thing so we've got the little version I'm just going to put some dirt in it Now I'm going to be doing a proper video on self-watering pot soon. This is just kind of um, as part of this little potting video. I'm talking about them a bit, but I will be kind of doing a proper review of what I think of self-watering pots and what I've had success with, with my self-watering pots and tips and tricks that I have learnt over the last six months of using them. So um, keep an eye out that for that video. If there's any specific questions you'd like to know, that I haven't answered today that you kind of went, oh, I wish you'd mention that. Um, please comment below and I will uh, make sure I include that note in the self-watering pot video. All right. So today I'm working on this lovely fold up potting mat, which I just grabbed on eBay. Uh, it's been really helpful when it's raining and disgusting and I can't pot outside. So there's the Fatona, very happy, and the Pink Princess. Very happy. All right, so I'm pretty much done. I've got two calatheas left to pot up and I'm just gonna do that off video now because I'm pretty much finished and I feel like this video is starting to get very long. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video today and you've enjoyed seeing some of my new plants that have had to be potted up. Um, I've enjoyed showing them to you and thank you for coming with me to find out that this is actually alive I think this is probably the most exciting moment of my day Honestly, I can't believe that this is still going so as you can see I've repotted it now with that bit of stem poking out and um, Those new growth points kind of a little bit more exposed to the elements. So fingers crossed that starts to grow soon um, my next step is I'm going to be taking all of these outside and giving them a water with my seaweed solution. Now I use one called Eco Seaweed that you mix yourself. Um, I love sea salt, but I don't like paying for the extra packaging and water. I like being able to pay for a powder I can mix myself, I can choose the strength, um, and then it's easier for me to pick up at the shops because it's this little tiny jar versus a big bottle. Um, so it's called Eco Seaweed and it's fantastic. I love it. So I'm going to give everybody a water with that besides the booby cactus. She is not going to be getting watered at all yet because she has no roots. So that one I'm not going to be watering. I'm going to just pop it on the shelf inside and keep a good eye on her and give her a little tiny bit of water in a week or two. And then a little tiny bit after that and a little tiny bit after that. I'm not going to be getting her a heavy water ever because there was some moisture in the soil and that's going to be more than plenty for her to absorb for a little while so um she's here the lady who sold it to me said i might have to stake it so um i'm gonna find a stake to put on the side of that so that she doesn't wobble around while her roots establish um but yes that soil already had enough moisture in it for a cactus that i don't i'm not going to be adding any extra like supplement liquid to that at all Otherwise, everyone's going to get a nice happy drink with um, the eco seaweed, including these ones in the self-watering pots. And that's going to go through the bottom and they're going to absorb that and um, keep drinking off that for a few days. But otherwise, uh, I hope you enjoyed my little last chance repot video. So my last big repot of the season. Um, and until spring comes back, really. Otherwise, it's only going to be desperately repotting things that absolutely have no choice. Otherwise that's it that i'm done for the for for now but uh thank you for watching i hope you've enjoyed this random little video and i apologize that they i will try i will try so hard to do a water baby wednesdays this week but i guess we'll have to see how we go the weather's disgusting and i have a lot of work to do and we'll find out if not, uh, I hope you enjoy this one and thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed looking at all these babies and learning about them. 
If there's anything I've missed and you want to know, hit me up. And if there's any video ideas that you want me to do, also hit me up. All in the comments or in my Instagram or on my Facebook. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and do all of those things that make YouTube like me more. <laughs> and uh, keep growing like your plants. Mwah.